Passengers who've tested negative for the coronavirus are finally allowed to leave the Diamond Princess. Questions are now being asked about how the floating quarantine facility became an incubator for disease. An expert on infectious disease control was invited on board to inspect the ship's response to the outbreak. It was completely chaotic. And uh, uh, some crews had a fever. They went to the medical center while wearing an N95 mask, but he didn't have any protection between his room and the medical room. He says he was worried about catching the virus while on board the vessel and say staff had failed to take adequate measures to halt its spread. Inside Princess Diamond, I was so scared. I was so scared of getting COVID-19 because there was no way to tell where the virus is. No green zone, no red zone. Everywhere could have virus and everybody was not careful about it. When the ship first arrived in Yokohama, 10 passengers tested positive for the virus. Two weeks later, more than 500 have now been infected. Japan has defended its response. With the urgency of the current situation, Japan has taken full measures to ensure prevention of the spread of infection, taking into consideration human rights and humanitarian needs, cooperating with relevant nations and taking appropriate measures. Some on board have described it as a floating prison. One British couple shared their experience via social media. <coughs> We're doing OK, we really are. Air conditioning is still getting us down. We've turned off the humidifier and we're leaving the door open, but we've closed that now. It's so damn cold outside. Shortly after, they announced they'd tested positive to coronavirus and would be moved to a hospital shortly. Thousands still remain on the Diamond Princess. For those evacuated, the journey's far from over. They still face up to two weeks quarantine in their home countries. And for more on this story, we can speak to Simon Danier. He is the Washington Post Bureau Chief in Tokyo. Hi, Simon. Thank you for joining us here on DW. Uh, we saw there that this ship is being called a floating prison, a floating Petri dish. What is behind the health officials' decision here to keep people on board despite the risks? Well, you know, Japan, at the time the decision was, was taken, Japan didn't have many cases of the virus. It wanted to keep the people who had the virus off the Japanese mainland. Um, and it felt that quarantine was the right strategy. As it turned out, they haven't done it well. I think the US, US officials are now openly saying that quarantine failed. And actually, as we look and as we know more about the way the quarantine was applied, we're beginning to find out that actually it really wasn't done in a medically sound way and that the conditions on board the ship were not, were not suitable um, to, to, to keep this many people on board the ship. And in particular, a, a Japanese doctor who went on board yesterday has released an absolutely damning video of the conditions on board the ship which he says are chaotic and scary, and he is not surprised that very many people have fallen sick. Yes, Simon, we have been hearing many reports of utter chaos on board, and there are still hundreds of people on this boat. Uh, what is happening to them? Well, they're, they're being released, as, as you said. Um, the people who, the foreigners who are being taken back to places like the United States and Canada, uh, are being given another 14 days quarantine because those governments don't believe that the quarantine on board the ship worked. The Japanese uh, patients who test negative for the virus are being allowed to leave. They're being, they're being allowed to board public transport this afternoon and, and go home. So Japan doesn't really want to admit that quarantine failed, even when other governments basically have... have have, have made that decision that the quarantine was not effective and that people were still being affected on, infected on board the ship. Um, it was a difficult decision for Japan because they didn't have facilities for 3,600 people uh, mm. on day one. But yeah. as time went by, it became increasingly clear as the number of people rose that the quarantine wasn't the right strategy. And I think many people felt Japan was very slow to react to the changing reality.
Yeah, Simon, what does it tell us about uh, the Japanese authorities and their ability to deal with this type of crisis? Do they not have the capacity uh, to deal with an outbreak uh, of, of this size? Well, look, you know, the, the, the doctor's testimony, he said that there was no expert in infectious diseases running the show on board the ship. It was entirely bureaucrats running the show. There were no procedures. He's covered, he's, he's treated people in Ebola, in, in Africa, in SARS, in China, in cholera. He knows how to protect people and protect himself. He's never been scared before. He said he was scared of the conditions on board the ship, and he's put himself in 14 days quarantine as a result of being on board that ship. He's keeping away from his family. He's keeping away from his patients. So he was absolutely shocked. So yes, bureaucrats in control, uh, scientists being sidelined. It is a little bit a case where I think the politics of the situation uh, took precedence over the science. And Simon, just quickly, how is this all, all of this going down in Japan? What do people there make of how the government has dealt with this? Well, that, that doctor's video, last time I checked, had already been seen 750,000 times. Uh, yesterday, opinion polls came out showing Prime Minister Abe's popularity falling quite significantly by five percentage points and more and more people questioning his handling of the crisis. So, yes, there is a real political cost for the government. It wanted to avoid bad news ahead of the Olympics, but now it has got bad news and big questions about its handling and it has to deal with them. All right, Simon Denyer, the Washington Post Bureau Chief in Tokyo. Thank you so much for speaking to us. Pleasure.